say out loud, I will stop being a pussy from this day forward and I will always approach within three seconds when I see a pretty girl. If she's being awkward and no response when I nicely approach her. Okay, so let's say you walk up, the girl's on her phone. Hey, what's up? I want to meet real quick. She's on her phone. Eh. We're like, mm. oh, can I just talk to you real quick? Eh. I'm out of there. I'm not going to cycle openers. I'm not going to tap her on the arm. I'm not going to start asking her friends why isn't she responding. I'm not going to insult her. I'm not going to start telling stories or anything like that. Why? Because she's not fucking interested. Am I going to feel like shit about myself? No, who, who cares? cares? You have to think of the sales analogy when you go and knock on doors. I did this first summer. Some people, regardless of who you are or how good your sales skills are, or how good the product is that you're selling, are not fucking interested. That's part of the game. You have to deal with it. Life will go on. It's just how things are. You can never get away from it. When you run into a girl that's just failing to acknowledge you or tells you to fuck off or tells you, no, please go away, leave instantly. Don't think about it twice and don't give a shit. Okay, it's the same thing when you knock on a door, someone opens it up, fuck off. We don't want any. Slams the door. You could think, wow, I suck. How could someone speak to me that way? The world is a terrible place. I'm going to go cry. You need to start reframing rejections as just that's not an opportunity. Not every girl is going to like you. Not every girl is going to be interested. Not every girl is going to be receptive. Learn that as a fact now so that you can stop taking it personally. Most guys are like, here's my ego, my precious frail ego. If you reject me or if you don't want to talk to me, I'm going to blame myself and I'm going to think that I suck. The sad truth is there's going to always going to be girls that don't like you. There's always going to be girls that don't want to talk to you, regardless of who you are or what night you go out on. When you run into that, just treat it like you open a door and they're like, we don't want any. And you close the door and you leave. And you should look at it in a positive way. Oh, good thing I didn't waste any more time talking to that girl. But what guys will typically do is they'll stand there and they'll try to use little game and tricks, tactics, stories, more openers, being non-reactive. Don't do that. Okay, this is sad. Best advice on dealing with regret and guilt of not approaching a woman. Let that pain motivate you. Back in January, I didn't approach a group in the elevator. Also happened in October. This used to happen to me too. Because what happens when you see a pretty girl in public is it incorrectly activates your amygdala fear circuit, which triggers your fight or flight response. Your body thinks there's like some kind of impending danger. Your heart starts racing, adrenaline comes in, you start having racing thoughts about these negative outcomes. And mystery's theory from an evolutionary biology perspective about why we feel all those things is that in a tribe of like 20 people, for instance, let's say 10 are female, and then let's say like five are not eligible for reproduction because they're too young or too old. Maybe there's five eligible girls and then maybe like only two or three are attractive. And what he theorized is that if you were to approach a girl that was taken, the guy could kill you because there's no law. Or if she rejects you, the other people in the small tribe would find out and you may never reproduce. So you were taking like a big evolutionary risk by doing an approach. This is what he theorizes. The point is, is that doesn't apply anymore in the modern day. There's virtually unlimited options for approaching and you're not going to get killed. And if you get rejected, you still can go fuck tons of other girls. You're probably never going to see that girl again. That doesn't change the fact that we have this antiquated circuitry improperly being triggered. So what you need to do is flat ignore those feelings and follow the three second rule. Make the decision right now, say out loud, I will stop being a pussy from this day forward and I will always approach within three seconds when I see a pretty girl. And if you're gonna keep letting it happen where you don't do that, it's gonna be painful and you're gonna have to wonder what could have been. This is what really motivated me. The times where you're like, I want to, but I can't. And then you're like, oh, don't be a fucking pussy. And you force yourself and you were very close to not approaching, but you do approach and it goes well and you fuck the girl's brains out. And it was awesome. And she goes in rotation for six months or over a year. And then you look back and you're like, none of this could have ever happened if I gave into the fear. When you have a few of those situations, you can just take my word for it instead of having to experience it directly. But literally, that's the alternative. You have a 0% shot if you give into the fear and don't go in. If you go in and it works out well, which you can increase the odds of working out well by learning proper strategy, optimal strategy that is, then there's this whole big upside of like bringing this girl into your life on a romantic or sexual level for potentially months or years. I have trouble walking away from interactions. It has to be like a fucking, as soon as you hit dead end or low probability of compliance, you have to be out of there. It's the same thing in poker. You get dealt a bad hand, you fold it. It's like snap decision, boom, bad hand, fold it, bad hand, fold it. Bad hand, fold it. Good hand, crush it. You want to be putting in your time and effort into the girls that are receptive or at least have the potential to be receptive. If the girl is not interested for any reason, 
or it's going to be a no-go, then you want to bounce the fuck out of there. If the girl says, I have a boyfriend, can I do a second diligence attempt? No. Misapplication of my principle and strategy. The due diligence is if the girl kind of just dismisses you at first, but not when she has a hard objection. A boyfriend's a hard objection. I mean, she's taken. It doesn't fucking matter. It's either she's not interested or she really has a boyfriend, in which case you leave either way. There's no like due diligence that's going to fix this shit here. The due diligence is for like, let's say you walk up to a girl like, hey, can I meet you real quick? And she's like, eh. Like, hey, I know you're busy on your phone. I just want to talk to you real quick. Oh, uh, what's up? Now you've broken through that. Now you can have an interaction. I just think sometimes girls put up non-compliance because as mystery says, they can't entertain an endless stream of nice guy approaches. So what do you do? You just give it a second attempt. Okay, if the girl's ignoring you, hey, I just want to talk to you real quick. Or if she's like, go away. Oh, I just wanted to meet you really fast. Can we just talk for a sec? If they're like, no, go away. Then you move on to the next girl and you don't take it personally and you don't get upset. That's a huge point. Our team put together a free quiz that takes about 30 seconds. And what you can do is you go identify the area you're struggling in the most or where you'd like to learn the most about. And it selects a customized set of free training videos that are going to really help you improve your skills in that area. Okay, there is no catch. Fuck no. This is dumb as shit. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. I'm Anthony. Oh, sorry. I have a boyfriend. Oh, well. You could bring him along too on our date. Don't do this. This is what not to do. It's not that you can't fuck girls with boyfriends. It's just a low probability situation and it could potentially put you in harm's way. You don't know who you're fucking with, which anonymous guy you're, you're, you're kind of pissing off on the other side. When you plan the date in person, yeah, I plan it for a public date. I don't ever say, oh, we can meet at my house tomorrow or the next day. I only do that over text. So good question. But you should work into the conversation, whatever it is that you do primarily on your public date activity. If that is margaritas, for instance, hey, you should come over after. You seem cool. Oh, I, I would love to, but I can't. My sister's in town. She's here till tomorrow or she's in town. Oh, when does she leave? She leaves tomorrow afternoon. Now you know you can't pull this girl. What do you do immediately next? From a tactical perspective, you frame the idea of a date and you want to do it as soon as possible. What time does she leave tomorrow? Oh, her flight's at two. Why don't we plan for three o'clock tomorrow? Do you like margaritas? Yes, I love margaritas. Cool. There's a margarita spot near where I live. Let's plan for that. Sounds good. Put in the calendar, 3 p.m. margaritas, right? Next morning. Hey, last night was fun. All good for three o'clock? Yes. I was thinking we could relax and talk more in my new apartment and see how the chemistry is. Beautiful view. Do you need me to call you an Uber? Or cool. Do you like wine? Yes. We could split a bottle of wine and, and see how the chemistry is. Do you prefer red or white? So then you just lead into the framing to the house after you already have their buy-in about meeting on a date and time in public. Okay, that's exactly how you do that. Keep striking out with the 8.5 to 9.5 range. I don't know how to believe I'm good enough without finances and lifestyle in order. The good news is some of the best periods of performance that I had in the game were when I was like close to broke. It did like hardly any SMB upgrades at all, close to zero. And I have clients that spend the last of their money on my training or, or otherwise are in not very good financial shape and they just destroy even living at home. It's not, you don't need finances in order at all to bang the hottest girls or any girls. You don't need lifestyle in order either, whatever that means. The chick doesn't know about your finances or lifestyle. I made this point, like unless you're like living in squalor, like below the poverty line or some shit, that could potentially be problematic. What are some of the hardest parts of doing formal game for 20 years? Did you get discouraged early on? It takes a toll. Like when I was really going hard, I was going out like six, seven nights a week, you know, like in Vegas, for instance, like when I lived in Vegas for a year. I was going out six or seven nights a week and I would sleep like two hours, two or three hours a night, sometimes only one hour a night. It's like doing game like around the clock. I would always drive myself crazy, like analyzing every fucking interaction, analyzing the whole night, even analyzing the successful interactions, picking it all apart. But at some point, like you stop finding people that are better than you. Like in the earlier days, it's like, okay, this guy's better than me at texting. This guy's better than me at day game. This guy's better than me at keeping girls. And this guy's better than me at writing dates or sexualizing. And I would always like really try to search out people that were better than me at any area so I could learn from them and adapt accordingly and make my system stronger. And eventually you stop finding people that are better than you at any area. And then you're like ascending on your own. And then it's like you against yourself. And the benchmark is like, how do I beat myself? How do I innovate to improve my own results? And it's not so much like a competition between you and others anymore. It's just you against yourself and how hard are you going to push yourself? And there's no one there to like force you to push yourself. You have to have like a deep rooted love for the game. And I just love optimizing systems as well. So it was a combination of like loving fucking hot chicks loving optimizing systems and just loving the game in general. Our team put together a free quiz that takes about 30 seconds. And what you can do is you go identify the area you're struggling in the most or where you'd like to learn the most about. And it selects a customized set of free training videos that are going to really help you improve your skills in that area. Okay, there is no catch. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. I ain't never had to fake. Just take a look at the 
scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.